Hello students, welcome to Simplify Pharma. Do subscribe to my channel to remain updated with the latest videos. Today we are gonna study potential target diseases for gene therapy, the second part. In our first part, we have already covered the topics like target cells of gene therapy, potential target diseases for gene therapy, in that we have covered three diseases, type 1 diabetes, X, SCID, and cystic fibrosis. In this part, we will cover Parkinson's disease, adenosine, DMINase deficiency, hemophilia, blindness, and cancer. Let's take a quick review of what happens in gene therapy. The cells are harvested from patient and virus is altered so that it does not reproduce once it is injected inside the human body. A gene is inserted into the virus. Altered virus mixed with patient cells. The cells, they are called as transgenic cells altered cells they inject into the patient's body and then these altered cells they produce the desired protein this is called as gene therapy now let's start with the parkinson's disease it is a disease with progressive neurological disorder the first signs are problems with movement smooth and coordinated muscle movements of the body are made possible by a substance in the brain that is called as dopamine. So this dopamine is responsible for Parkinson's disease. Now we all are aware dopamine is produced in a part of the brain called the substantia nigra. Can you see over here in this figure substantia nigra over here the dopamine is produced the neurons they secrete dopamine. In Parkinson's disease, what happens? The cells of the substantia nigra, they start to die. And when this happens, these cells can no longer produce dopamine. So what will happen? The dopamine levels will start reducing. And when the dopamine levels, they drop below 60 to 80 percent, symptoms of Parkinson's start to appear. Now it is characterized by accumulation of protein called alpha synuclein into the inclusions called Levi's bodies in neurons. So it leads to insufficient formation of dopamine and inactivity of the activities responsible for dopamine. Parkinson's disease is a progressive nervous system disorder that affects the movement symptoms they start gradually sometimes starting with a barely noticeable tremor in just one hand tremors are common but the disorder also commonly causes stiffness or slowing of movement so we can see in this diagram lack of dopamine that leads to symptoms like stiffness shaking difficulty in movement It will start with tremor of the hands that will be even at rest. Persistent tremors, shuffling gait, unbalanced and in small steps curved in a characteristic way. So if you'll see in this diagram, normal neuron, it produces enough dopamine that is that helps in normal movement. Whereas the Parkinson's affected neuron, the dopamine, can you see in the figure? it is produced in very less quantity and this is the reason the movement disorders happens so the transmitting neuron when it produces enough dopamine and it re reaches the receptor cell this happens in healthy patient whereas in Parkinson's patient the transmitting neuron doesn't produce dopamine in enough quantity and this is the reason the receptor cell will not receive dopamine and that will lead to movement related disorders. Now we'll come to the gene therapy that is used to treat Parkinson's and there's a case study. 
Neurologics, a biotech company, announced that they have successfully completed its landmark phase one trial of gene therapy for Parkinson's disease. And this was a 12 patient study with four patients in each of the three dose escalating cohorts. So, the dopamine synthesizing genes it was uh, included into the lenti vector, and this transduced uh, genes they were then injected into the uh, brain of uh, patients those who participated in the clinical trial and then it resulted in production of dopamine all procedures were performed under local anesthesia and all 12 patients were discharged from the hospital within 48 hours of the procedure and followed by a follow-up of 12 months Primary outcomes of the study design safety and tolerability were successfully met. There were no adverse events reported relating to the treatment. The gene transfer procedure utilized the adeno-associated virus vector, a virus that has been used safely in a variety of clinical gene therapy trials and the vehicle that will be used in all of the company's first generation products including epilepsy and Huntington disease. In its Parkinson's disease trial, Neurologics used its gene transfer technology. Coming to the next disease that is treated using gene therapy, adenosine deaminase deficiency, ADD. So adenosine deaminase deficiency, also called as ADA deficiency, is an inherited condition that damages the immune system and is a common cause of severe combined immunodeficiency. Now, people with severe combined immunodeficiency due to ADA deficiency are unable to fight off most type of infection including bacterial, viral and fungal. They are, and this is the reason they are prone to repeated and persistent infections that can be very serious or even life threatening. These infections are often caused by opportunistic organisms that ordinarily do not cause illness in people with a normal immune system. So adenosine deaminase is encoded by a gene on chromosome number 20. When a mutation occurs in this chromosome, what happens? Uh, it is autosomal recessive disorder. That means uh, both the parents, if they are mutant or if they are carrying the genes, if two carrier parents, they have a child, so there is a 25% chance the child will be completely healthy, 50% chance that the child will be a carrier and there is a 25% chance that the child will be affected with ADA SCID. The main symptoms of ADA deficiency are pneumonia, chronic diarrhea and widespread skin rashes. Affected children also grow much more slowly than healthy children and some have developmental delay. ADA deficiency is caused by mutations in the ADA gene and is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. We just saw in the previous slide. Diagnosis may be suspected by newborn screening or symptoms and confirmed by blood and genetic test results. Currently, the most effective treatment is transplantation of blood forming stem cells from the bone marrow of a healthy brother or sister of the person with ADA deficiency. So as of now, Bone marrow is the most effective treatment. This was also the first genetic disorder to be clinically treated with gene therapy. Now, absence of adenosine deaminase in children, it leads to an accumulation of deoxyadenosine triphosphate that is toxic to lymphocytes. So, patient with ADA develops recurrent life-threatening infection due to cell-mediated and humoral immune responses. So let's take a look at the case study. Standard therapy is bone marrow transplantation as we saw in the previous slide along with periodic infusion of PEG coupled recombinant enzyme. In the first clinical trial, two patients were infused with periodic blood T lymphocytes that had been transduced with a retroviral vector LASN containing the human ADA gene. One of these two patients had long-term persistence of transduced T lymphocytes, while the other had a poor response. The responsive patient 
experienced improvement in symptoms of the disease and is living a normal life several years after treatment you can refer to this research article for more information so basically what happens in gene therapy for ada seid patient with toxic level of adenosine and deoxyadenosine triphosphate the t cells are removed the t cells are cultured and then the t cells are uh, infected with the vector lasn then it is cloned with the human gene then the t cell we get the t cells that are carrying the human adac dna this corrected ada gene is amplified and infused back to the patient so toxic level of adenosine and deoxyadenosine decreases coming to the next disease hemophilia it is usually an inherited bleeding disorder in which the blood does not clot properly hemophilia is a rare disorder in which your blood doesn't clot normally because it lacks sufficient blood clotting proteins that is a clotting factors so if you have hemophilia you may bleed for a longer time after an injury that you would if your blood clotted normally when blood cannot clot properly excessive bleeding which can be either external or internal occurs after any injury or damage symptoms include many large or deep bruises joint pain swelling unexplained bleeding and blood in urine or stool and treatment includes injections of a clotting clotting factor or plasma so this is what happens in a healthy individual normal blood vessel if there is any injury hemorrhage there will be clotting but whereas in hemophilia normal blood vessel if there is any injury hemorrhage will happen but the clotting will not happen or it happens but pretty delayed it is caused by mutation or change in one of the genes that provides instruction for making the clotting factor protein needed to form a blood clot this change or mutation can prevent the clotting protein from working properly or to be missing altogether these genes are located on the x chromosome so what does that mean males have 1x and 1y chromosome whereas the females have 2x chromosomes so males inherit the x chromosome from their mothers y chromosome from their fathers females inherit 1x chromosome from from each parent the x chromosome contains many genes that are not present on the y chromosome so this means that males only have one copy of most of the genes on the x chromosome whereas females have two copies so in any case if the males inherit the x chromosome with a mutated uh, gene that is responsible for clotting factor protein so that person will be affected by this disorder whereas in case of female the female if inherits uh, it from the mother then in that case uh, only from one parent it will be a carrier if it inherits from both the parent in that case it will show effect those males can have a disease like hemophilia if they inherit an affected x chromosome that has a mutation in either the factor 8 or factor 9 gene female can also have hemophilia but this is a very rare situation very rarely both the parents they are either carriers or affected by this gene in such cases both x chromosomes are affected or one is affected and other one is missing or inactive in these females bleeding symptoms may be similar to males with hemophilia so let's take this inheritance pattern where father does not have hemophilia but mother is a carrier of the hemophilia gene so what will happen 50% chance sons will have uh 50% chance that the sons will have hemophilia and 50% the daughters will be a carrier of the hemophilia so if you'll see this son does not have hemophilia this son has hemophilia this daughter does not have hemophilia and this daughter she'll be a carrier of hemophilia so you can see 50% chance the sons will have hemophilia 
and 50% chance the daughter will be a carrier of hemophilia. So these are the different types of uh, disorders related to hemophilia. Hemophilia A, B, C and parahemophilia. Hemophilia A is deficiency of clotting factor 8. Hemophilia B, deficiency of clotting factor 9. Hemophilia C, deficiency of clotting factor 11. Parahemophilia, deficiency of clotting factor 5. Now patients born with hemophilia are not able to induce blood clots and suffer from external internal bleeding that can be life threatening. In a clinical trial conducted in United States, the therapeutic gene was introduced into the liver of patient who then acquired the ability to have normal blood clotting time. The therapeutic effect however was transient. Why? Because the genetically corrected liver cells, they recognized these things as foreign and it was rejected by the healthy immune system in the patient. This is the same problem faced by patients after organ transplantation and curative outcome by gene therapy might be achievable with uh, immunosuppressant drugs, alternative gene delivery strategies that are still being uh, tested. So hemophilia gene therapy, there are two options, either in vivo or ex vivo. In vivo, the therapeutic gene is induced into the vector and it is directly delivered inside the human subject. Whereas ex vivo, the therapeutic gene is included inside the virus vector and we use several cells to again transduce uh, or infuse it into the human body. And now you'll be wondering what is this MSC, HSC and IPSC. Uh, HSC is hemo hematopoietic stem cells. MSC, mesenchymal stem cells. IPSC, induced pluripotent stem cells. So this is basically stem cell therapy that is used ex vivo gene therapy treatment where the virus vector is uh, transduced with these cells and then it is infused inside the human subject and for further information you can refer to this article wherein you will find how stem cell therapy is used to carry out the gene therapy so um, we'll just with the help of diagram understand the gene therapy for type A whereas the DNA encoding factor 8 this is the DNA encoding for factor 8. Factor 8 DNA it must be compressed because it is very long and optimized before it will fit inside the virus. Then it is uh, transduced with the virus. It is then transfected into the nucleus wherein the new factor 8 protein are produced and they enter the bloodstream and they start blood clotting. What happens in type B therapy, DNA encoding for factor 9, it is bound with the virus carrying the factor 9 gene, then this is induced into the nucleus inside the liver cell and wherein new factor 9 proteins are produced and they enter the bloodstream to carry out their particular function. The next disease is blindness. The Leber congenital amaurosis is an eye disorder that primarily affects the retina, which is a specialized tissue at the back of the eye that detects the light and color. So people with this disorder typically have severe visual impairment beginning in infancy. The visual impairment tends to be stable, although it may worsen very slowly over time. So this is normal eye if we take a look the retina, cornea, iris, pup pupil, lens, optical nerve. So if you'll see, the light enters through the lens and wherein the lens refracts the light onto the retina. So this labor congenital amaurosis can result from mutation in at least 14 genes, all of which are necessary for normal vision. These genes play a variety of roles in the development and function of the retina. Mutations in any of the genes associated with Leber congenital amaurosis disrupt the development and function of the retina resulting in early vision loss. You can see mutations in the CEP290, CRB1, 
GUCY2D and RPE65 genes are the most common causes of the disorder while mutations in the other genes it also occur but generally account for smaller percentage of cases this is the normal retina that we can see and this is a retinal degeneration that occurs how is the inheritance pattern it usually again occurs through autosomal recessive pattern autosomal recessive inheritance means that both the parents must carry a defective gene for their child to be born with the disorder the parents of an individual with an autosomal recessive condition each carry one copy of the mutated gene but they typically do not show signs and symptoms of the condition let's take a case study it is a rare inherited eye disease that appears at birth or in the first few months of life so researchers at moorfields eye hospital and university college london in london conducted the first gene therapy clinical trial for patients with rpe65 lca the first patient was operated upon in early 2007 researchers at children's hospital of philadelphia and the university of pennsylvania pennsylvania have treated six young people via gene therapy eye surgeon dr l macker and gene therapy expert dr jean bennett developed the technique used by the children's hospital now how the therapy works the retina the thin lining at the back of the eye it is detached from the surrounding blood vessels by spraying it with a saline solution and then the missing chm gene is injected into the light sensing cells of the retina where it starts producing protein and repairs the damaged cells the retina reattaches itself within a day then coming to the last disease cancer this disease has been covered in my previous presentation in detail and this is one of the most important disease that is cured using gene therapy now what are the challenges that we face when we are treating several diseases using gene therapy the very first challenge is it is short lived now how hard to rapidly integrate therapeutic dna into genome and rapidly dividing nature of the cells it prevent the gene therapy from long time effect would have to have multiple rounds of therapy the second challenge that we face is immune response anything new that is introduced it leads to immune response inside the human body increase response when a repeated offender enters then the third challenge is using viral vectors patient could have toxic immune inflammatory response to viral vectors also they may cause some disease once they are inside the human body so it can happen you are trying to cure one disease but it leads to another disease in case of multi gene disorders heart disease high blood pressure alzheimers arthritis diabetes they are hard to treat using gene therapy why because you need to introduce more than one gene then the last one it may induce a tumor if integrated in a tumor suppressor gene because of insertional mutagenesis these are the reference do subscribe to my channel to stay updated with all the latest videos that i keep on posting you can leave your comments or any doubts questions in the comment section do let me know if you like my video